Welcome to this training video. In this video, we're going to cover how to deal with translations in Articulate Storyline or Articulate Storyline 360 to be a bit more exact. So translations, just to let you know, I'd never dealt with translations up until a couple of years ago, um, just done everything in English, uh, until I was tasked with creating some translations for the training material. Um, it was a course, that, you know, not too dissimilar to this, had to uh, translate it from one language into seven different languages. Now, I don't speak any other languages. Uh, mine are Deutsch, it's nix so good. And um, so we engaged with translation services to do this. But what we had to do, or what I had to do, was get this text out of here into a document for the translators to use. Now, I could have copied and pasted all of this into a uh, Word document, and then when they sent it back, I could have copied and pasted it all the way back. Couple of problems though. There's a large opportunity for error if you are doing lots of copying and pasting. And secondly, it's going to take ages. You know, So this is a course with six slides. Um, but if we go to this slide, for example, there is layers with some text in there you know, and so forth. Um, there's also, you must remember about this, you've got the correct option and a quiz and the incorrect option. So there's lots of things that can be done. And this is a relatively short course. So the way to do it, though, and I'll show you this, is... In Articulate Storyline, with the course that is open, go to File, and then go to Translate, and then you've got Options. You've got Export to XLIFF. I have no idea what that means. Um, it's obviously a file format, not something I'm familiar with, and I'm probably never going to look it up because I don't need to. Reason being is because I use Export to Word. Yes, you can export it into Microsoft Word. And then finally, you've got Import, which we'll cover later on. So let's export to Word. Choose your file name and choose the location you want to be saving it to. So I'll be saving it to this location, though you can change it if you wish to do so. And choose whether you want to include a slide thumbnail for reference or not. That means that when it comes out in a Word document, it's going to have these thumbnails on the left hand side included. Um, I always leave these included. It's just easier if I want to kind of look at that document and I can kind of become familiar with what I'm looking at. What you do now is press OK. Okay, it's exported and translation. And you saw, that was in real time by the way, so you saw it took a few seconds. It is a course with six slides, so it takes a few seconds. I've done this for courses with hundreds of slides and um, it takes, again, 30 seconds. Yeah, maybe that at most. Um, it's not a 10 minute job, you know, it's a very simple thing to do. I was, I was suitably impressed with how quick it was. What you have here then, this is the Word document, and this has already been saved. So you've got the source file name, so this is the, the, the name of, of the course. The author, which is an unfortunate abbreviation or cut down version of my surname. Lots of information here that I never look at. Scene ID, you know, you can see this little lock element here. Uh, this padlock, it means, you know, do nothing with it, so don't touch it. So don't touch any of these things. Let's move down to something that's a bit more important. We've got the preview image. So this is the thumbnail that we chose to include. And then we've got these bits here. The bits you want to focus on, and particularly the translators want to focus on, are the source text and the translation. The source text is the original text. What does it say? And the translation is what would you like it to say? So this is the slide name. So if we look over here, so I've still got storyline in the background. The slide is called introduction, and that is a slide name, introduction, and do I want to change it? If I'm going to have a menu system on the side, then yes, I'd recommend changing it. If you're not going to have a menu system, don't worry about it. Text box. So this is the bit that says management training. So it's this bit here, management training. So I want to change that into whatever it should be in a different language. So I'll call it Mantrain. By the way, as I said, I don't speak any other languages, so I can't even do this. I could use Google Translate if I wanted to. You know what, shall we do that? Shall we open up Google Translate? Right, let's use Google Translate. So the original bit of text, let's pretend that I am a translator and I know what I'm doing. Yeah, management training, English. Ah, look at that. In German, it's also management training. Should we pick a different language? Should we do a, a language that's completely different? Hindi. Oh, look at that. There we go. Let's do all of this in Hindi. So there we go. That's the Hindi version of it. Course one, staff inductions. I'll copy that. I'd assume your translators are not going to be using um, Google Translate. I assume that they'll be using their own abilities. Copy and paste. There we go. Start. Yeah. So we want to change that word there. 
Right, so you can see I've changed some bits on it. Your translators would do this for the whole document. So they change this translation column. Yeah, so change all of this into the appropriate language. Now what's important is that people don't change any of these other bits. So you can see these IDs and everything, they're all going to be relating to the different elements of this course. Okay, so make sure they're not changing that. But what this translation does, or um, Articulate Storyline, what it's doing the translation, it includes all these things. So these are buttons. So you've got the Agree and Disagree button. Let's have a look at for those Agree and Disagree buttons. There we go, Agree and Disagree. So for the purpose of this, let's uh, use... As I say, I'm definitely not a translator. There you go. So they go through this entire document and make sure that everything's been translated. Once they've done that, save it. And then, first thing I'd recommend is make sure you've got a copy of this course. So this is the original version of the course. So make sure you are doing a copy for the other language. So I'll give you an example. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to close down this course. So I'm in the folder where the course is held. Let's make a copy of this course. And I'm going to make a copy, I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to say, you know, uh, put Hindi. Oops. Hindi next to it, okay? Because if that's the original version of it, you don't want to be, you know, completely changing all the English in the original. You want to have a duplicate, so you've got one in Hindi, German, French, Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, whatever else. What I now need to do, so let's pretend that all the translations have been done. And I'm just going to drag into here the Word document, the one with the actual translations on it. So this is the, the document that we uh, exported earlier. You can see it's got the Hindi writing in it. So let's show you now the importing process. So we're going to pretend that the, uh, that the translator has done their job. We'll open up the course for translation Hindi version. Okay, that's opened up. You then go to File, Translation, Import. Find the document that document there. Click on open, import it, click OK, make sure you save it and now let's have a look and see what's happened. And there you can see, you can see that everything that I actually imported into it in terms of my translations have been translated. So you can see the buttons have been translated, all this text has. Uh, I didn't do anything on this screen, well I did actually, I did the agree and disagree didn't I? So you can see that they've been translated as well. So you can see how well it works. You know, it's it's excellent. Things to bear in mind though, so something to consider, is when you do the import, so text like this is all perfect. You know, this is in English still. If you translate this into a language which I'll call a large language, like Russian, for example, then that text could be a lot bigger. You know, in terms of it takes up more size on the screen. Let's give you an example. So I'll, I'll put in Russian. So I've dealt with quite a lot of languages now. Um, all right, so there we go, there's that. So if I copy that, let's have a look and see how much space it takes up. So let's pretend I was doing this in Russian. Uh, not too bad, it's not too bad. But you do get some examples where it takes up a lot more space. And if that's the case, it'll you know go over the size of the screen. Other things to consider are, you know, I've got these bits, so different layers will pop up with the text appearing up there. If that has lots of text, let's pretend that text kind of went all the way over to here. If again, if it's in a language like Russian, then it might be overflowing into the picture and you have to edit it so you can make it fit. You might have to reduce the text size. Something else to note is that on this, um, this quiz question, yeah, so quiz question one, correct and incorrect, I've had it in the translation document where the bit for correct was actually not appearing in the translation document. Uh, let's open up the document and to see if it is in there. So let's have a look. So it's going to be the very last slide. So ah, it is appearing. So there we go. The correct one is appearing. So well done. You've got it right. But I have had it where it was not appearing. So please do bear that in mind and make sure that everything is, you know, is in there as it's meant to be. Looking at this document again at the very end, you can see you've got more information here. These are menu items, so again, choose whether you want them translated or not. Also, sometimes, so if you've got a quiz results screen, uh, then you might have some coding where it actually brings through the results. So it might be like, you know, uh, you'll get something that says, I'll try and 
not, I'll type it in, but it'll, it, it'll look something like this. Yeah. That bit there doesn't need to actually be translated. Okay, so that bit there won't need to be translated, but you know, you'll learn, you'll learn about these type of things as you do them. But as you can see, the actual process for exporting is file, translation, export to Word, send it to a translator, get them to translate it. When it comes back, click on import and bring it in. And as I say, just make sure you've got multiple copies of the course. Um, so you, know, you have your English version because you don't want to overwrite it and you have it in all your other languages. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll keep creating lots of content relating to Articulate Storyline, Camtasia, uh, other e-learning creation tools, uh, tech tips, uh, new technology. I'm always buying new stuff, so I'll, I'll give you some reviews for it. And um, if you can also like the video. Also, if you do have any questions or something you'd like me to cover, please put it in the comments down below and I'll, I'll create a video on that. Thanks very much and enjoy your translating in Articulate Storyline.